Hi everyone, Christina here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a magic slider card or a color slider card using the magic slider dies from Simon Says Stamp. The first thing you need to do is cut a few of those dies apart. You can leave um, some of them together and I'll show you which ones need to stay together. I then cut a it's actual pocket that creates the slider mechanism and this is 10 inches long by four and a quarter tall and then I've scored it at five inches. Eventually I will cut this down but for now this is the size that I'm working with. So I've scored that and folded it over so it has a nice crease and now I'm going to take the rectangle die. There's another die that looks sort of like this, but it has a rounded end on it. You don't want the rounded end at this point. You just want the rectangular die. And you're going to place that on your pocket and run that through your die cutting machine to create the window. And this is the window where all of our stamping is going to be. And it also needs some acetate with it. So I'm going to use the cutout from that die as a guide to just cut out some acetate that's slightly larger than the window. And it doesn't have to be precise measurement, just a little bit bigger than the window. And then I'm taking those remaining dies and I'm cutting those using some Nina Solar White cardstock. And I'm using the 110 pound version. I find that the slightly thicker cardstock works great for these slider cards. So now I'm going to do a bunch of stamping. And the first thing you're going to do is place your pocket mechanism into your MISTI tool or a stamp positioning tool. You don't have to have a stamp positioning tool, but it definitely makes this part of the uh, slider mechanism easier. So I put it in and taped it down so that I can fold it up and fold it down and stamp on the inside of the pocket and on the front. And I want to make sure that the fold is where I want the slider piece to come out because I'm going to use the fold as a stopper so that I can't pull the slider mechanism all the way out on its own. So I placed some stamps here. The little bunny is from Simon Says Stamps Cuddly Critter stamp set. And then the balloon is from the Cuddly Critters Accessories. And I actually trimmed that balloon stamp so it was a little bit shorter so it would fit inside the window. Um, if I ever need to stamp that balloon again, I can always mount them together. So I'm gonna flip this pocket open and I'm going to stamp the inside of the pocket first. This is the area that will be in full color. So I'm stamping that in VersaFine Onyx Black ink, which is a waterproof ink. I'm going to be doing some watercoloring on top, so I wanted to use a waterproof ink. And I also used Bristol uh, paper for this, a Strathmore Bristol paper, because the coloring medium I'm going to use is some Zig Clean Color Markers. So I protected the inside of that pocket with a large post-it note. And then I taped that pocket closed so that I can stamp on the front of the pocket. This is just going to stamp some of those areas that are hanging outside the window. So this, the bunny's feet and then also the side of that heart balloon. And that's just going to further, um, it, I just think it looks really cool to have a little bit of the design going off the edges of the window. So I'll take that window piece out and now I'm going to stamp the acetate. And this has to be stamped very precisely because you want it to be seamless as you uh, do the coloring and, and put it all together. So I place the acetate over that bunny and balloon and then I'm cleaning off the stamp. I'm gonna change inks here because a VersaFine ink is a pigment ink and so it won't ever really dry on top of acetate. Instead, I'm going to switch to Stazon Jet Black ink. And this is a really sticky ink, so you wanna make sure to tape down that acetate or use some post-it tape to tape it down and hold it in place because as I swing this over, and stamp the bunny and the heart balloon. When I pull up, it's going to want to pull up that sheet of acetate with it. It's gonna be really sticky, and so you wanna tape it down, just in case you need to stamp it again. But in my case, it was pretty okay. I just had one little spot that on the, the string on the balloon that wasn't complete. So I'm gonna place that over the top of my little bunny area and I'm gonna tape it down again, and then I'm going to take a fine-tipped Sharpie marker, which will write on the slick surface of the acetate, and I'm just going to draw in the bottom portion of that balloon. Um, instead of having to re-stamp that over again and, and possibly not having it stamped correctly, I decided to just use that marker. 
So I've closed the pocket and I'm tracing a pencil along the, along the inside of that window. And then I'm taking my slider mechanism. This is the die cut piece that has the rounded end. And I'm using that as a guide to get the measurements for how big I want this um, opening to be on my fold. So I've made two little tick marks with a pencil and then I'm cutting a little opening for that slider to go in and out. And you want it to be uh, just the right size. You don't want it to be any bigger than that slider. And you also don't want it to be any smaller because if it's smaller, the slider won't come out at all. So you kind of want to just uh, be really patient with yourself, cut a little bit at a time until you get the perfect measurement. So you want it to slide in just like this and have it move freely. You don't want it to have any um, catches on it or make it so it doesn't run through smooth. So now I'm going to take a little bit of some tape adhesive. This is Express It tape. And I've put adhesive on the very end of that slider piece. You're going to use the straight end piece. You're going to glue down one of the smaller strips that were die cut earlier. There are two of these strips are the same size. One of them goes on the back of the slider and the other one's going to go um, on the inside of the pocket. So I've got that slider covering up the bunny area and then I'm adhering one of the longer um, tracks along the side. You want it to leave a gap in between the slider and uh, the track and then you know just use the, the size of the stopper as a guide and then you can put the smaller stopper on the one end and then pull that all the way through and then all you have to do is match up where the um, stopper on the slider is and where the, the end of that track is on the other side. And you can adhere that down. So it creates sort of like a U shape that um, nestles around the stamped area. This is going to make more sense once we have everything put together. But basically, um, you're creating a track system that keeps that slider in place as it moves in and out of the cart. So I'm going to erase the pencil lines and then I'm going to move on to painting my scene here and I've sped up the video process quite a bit. The, the medium I'm using today is Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers and I'm also using a, a Pentel Aquash brush and um, I love using these markers on top of Bristol paper. This is Strathmore Bristol paper. Um, I've tried using these markers on other papers and it just doesn't work as well. Um, I really struggle to get the colors to blend out and really move. But there's something about this Bristol paper, I think there's a little bit of a coating on it that really helps the color sit on top on the top of the surface a little bit longer than other papers. So it gives you the time you need to really blend out those colors. So if you have ever had any frustration with um, even like distress markers or um, uh, watercolor pencils, things like that, like different watercolor mediums that don't want to really spread, try them on Bristol paper because it, it might be the difference that makes you love those mediums. So I'm bringing in a, a darker blue on the bottom and then a lighter blue at the top, just trying to make sure I have quite a bit of color showing through. And making, and then I'm going to add some gray at the bottom beneath the bunny as a shadow. And this is going to give me a nice full color area. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to adhere the acetate down onto the inside of that pocket uh, front. So I'm placing the acetate directly over my stamped area. You want it to line up as perfectly as possible. I'm using two pieces of post-it tape just to hold that in place. And then I'll swing that down and that's going to stick those adhesive strips that I placed on the outside of that window. That's going to adhere them down. And then I can just pull out these post-it areas and press down the acetate so everything is adhered down completely. So this um, makes sure that the image that's on the window on the acetate matches up with the stamped image on the inside of the pocket. So I'm going to add some more adhesive. I'm putting it on the outer edges of the pocket as well as on all of the track pieces. And this is going to enclose that entire slider area and make it so that that um, slider goes in and out really easily and it doesn't go off the tracks. So I'm adding all that adhesive around all of those edges. 
and then I'm going to remove the release paper on all of these and then don't forget to put your slider in because that's um, you can't forget to do that because that would ruin your card so remove all the release paper and then put that slider in you want to make sure that that stopper on the slider is not showing so have it go underneath and then you can flip that pocket over and press down where all that adhesive is and then you've you've built your entire slider mechanism you could definitely leave it just like this maybe um, fold the card base and glue it on top but I decided to actually trim this down so it was smaller and I'm going to do a watercolor background for the rest of the card front so I'm using that piece of acetate that I used earlier um, that I cut a small corner out of and I'm scribbling on using my Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers and some of the colors that I used in the scene that I've already painted. So I'm adding those on. I'm going to add a little bit of that darker blue. This is peacock blue. It's one of my favorite colors. And then I'll take a spray bottle. This is a Distress Sprayer and I'll just spray that over the top of this scribbled area. Then I can pick up that acetate sheet and flip it over very carefully and then just smush that down onto my card base. I've created a card base out of some Bristol paper it's just so that the white colors match and I'm pressing that down and getting all those colors to move around and I wish it looked like that before I lifted the acetate but um, when you lift the acetate it moves the, the water around a little bit and so you get um, some really organic shapes. So just pounce that a little bit, um, added a few more areas um, of pouncing color. Most of this is actually going to be covered up by that slider area, but I really did love how this turned out. So after I dried that completely, I flicked on some water, just using the palm of my hand, and then I used a paper towel to pick up some of that color. These Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers, the ink in them is very reactive to water. So it's very similar to Distress inks in that way, where you can put water on top and then pick up the color. So I decided to add a little bit of color to the slider mechanism. So I just drew a line where that uh, sticks out the top. And then I used a black marker, the same Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers, and colored that in. And after that was colored, I used a white Jelly Roll pen just to write the word pull on top. This is going to make sure that the person who receives this card knows what to do in order to reveal the colored area. So I put this on foam adhesive just so it sticks up off the front of the card so it's a little bit easier to pull that tab. And glued that down and then I took a black sharpie marker the same one I used on the balloon earlier and put a stitched line around the end around the frame so that is the magic slider card or the color slider card super fun I thought this was a really fun way to have an interactive card thanks for watching I hope you guys enjoyed and I will catch you guys next time